like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars lend me the next five ten minutes and let me establish something very powerful psalms 11 and verse 3 there is one spiritual mystery that except engage with understanding is responsible for the supposed laxity as far as the manifestation of the hand of god is concerned over the lives of god's people i just want to open your eyes to see it very quickly and then we'll pray because this night in the name of jesus for someone it is your night of liberty it is your night of release by the power that raised christ from the dead the bible says if the foundations be destroyed what can the it didn't say what can the people do the righteous even though they are the righteous by the time the foundation is destroyed the bible says there is serious problem the word foundation is a very important word i wish i had the time to teach but this is a miracle service tonight foundation simply means the point of origin foundation means the starting point architecturally foundation means the load bearing part of a building usually invisible so when the bible talks about foundations he means the starting point that there is something about the starting point of a man and that if it is faulty there has to be a rule of engagement to correct it in other words to see the mighty and outstretched arm of god hallelujah in matthew chapter 7 from verse 24 jesus himself was teaching and he said it does not matter the dexterity of your architecture no matter how true how powerful what you build is if it is built on a faulty foundation he gives you a guarantee that something will go wrong i will liken him he says to a wise man which built his house on a rock to 27 next verse the bible says the rain descended the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell not not because of the paint not because of the strength of the materials that were used simply because it was on a very solid foundation next verse 26 it says so also there is someone who built his house what was common with both of them is that they built and they built well there was no problem with the building maximum architecture was employed in the building but the problem was the foundation listen very carefully the same thing that happened to the one who had a house on the rock happened to the one who had a house on sand and the bible says the last verse 27 that the same rain the same winds the same floods came and the bible says it fell and so great was the fall of it can i tell you the truth faulty spiritual foundations have prophetic spiritual implications to the point that it can seem to cripple the hand of god over the life of a man most believers do not understand that the realm of the spirit has a predefined modus operandi and if you do not know how the realm of the spirit operates you can keep wishing for things to happen and keep being embarrassed forever the psalmist said listen if i keep using emotions and i keep complaining and i keep grumbling i may not receive any result but i need to drop all this aside and say have respect for the covenant not just my tears not just what i feel not just my prayer request are we together when hezekiah in chapter 38 of isaiah when isaiah came and prophesied to him and said put your house in order you will not recover the bible says he turned his face to the wall and said remember how i have walked diligently before you 
in truth and with a perfect heart and i have done that which is good in your sight he didn't say remember i am a king he needed to use a basis to say i can't die not based on this there are rules of engagement in this kingdom now let me tell you the truth as powerful as god is as powerful and mighty as god is he didn't cast sin out of man why will god seem to be so helpless when he was the one who created man he was the one who created the devil that caused man to fall if god wiped the whole the whole earth and heaven why did he not just wipe satan away and start afresh if i were god why would i go through the labor of coming to die as creator he was not co-creator he was creator and is creator you thought he would just say sin get out of man satan vanish dematerialize and go away i am god is still within his power is there anything too hard but even god had to submit to the modus operandi of the spirit are we together now negotiated and sent jesus jesus came through the womb of a virgin walked 30 years died was buried went to the grave all to save man's sin was it that hard for god when you understand that you will stop the realm of wishing and hoping that things will change god you are mighty it does not take you anything to lift me you are right but you will still remain in that situation because that is not what compels the mighty hand of god let me tell you the truth god is touched by his love but he arises based on his honor to the modus operandi of the realm of the spirit have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are a habitation of cruelty many of us come from families that have fraternized with darkness foundationally many of us right now are sitting on all kinds of demonic things that we have not engaged the word of god and spiritual understanding to bring liberty practically and yet we keep saying it does not matter and our lives keep showing that there is a legitimate ground for the continuity of certain things please listen carefully i when it has to do with oppression and the rules of the spirit it does not care whether you are a preacher it does not care whether you are sincere the bible says the ones who will be asking questions are even the righteous that if the foundation be destroyed it is the righteous who will even be complaining hallelujah for instance in joshua chapter 6 from verse 26 when joshua destroyed jericho he made a pronouncement by the spirit listen carefully joshua adjured them at that time saying cause be the man before the lord that rises up and builded this city jericho he said he shall lay the foundation in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it joshua made a pronouncement that anybody that rises to rebuild jericho again as that person lays the foundation he will lay it on the life of his firstborn and as he completes it he will complete it on the life of his lastborn first kings chapter 16 let me show you something i have verse 33 now the man called ahab the bible says he made a grove and ahab did more to provoke the lord god of israel to anger than all the kings of israel that were before him read verse 34 please or let me just read it and you listen he said in his days did hiel the bethelite build jericho is that in your bible the bible says he laid the foundation in abiram his firstborn if you were the firstborn of that man it was not your fault to be the firstborn you just know that as soon as they started that project a mysterious disease will come upon you and you'll be wondering what did i do wrong not knowing that a speaking is looking for you and you may go and say but medical doctors will check you 
what is wrong with the machine cannot diagnose what is wrong not knowing that the person who spoke has died yet the prophetic word is still in force abiram started getting mysteriously sick until he died the firstborn and the man still refused in defiance he set up the gate thereof now the bible does not tell us whether the man was aware of the prophecy or not whether he was aware or he was not aware as far as the prophecy was concerned whoever triggers it let it work ah. please listen please listen please listen please listen because this is not about being sincere and insincere what did abiram do to die please talk to me did he kill anybody did he look for anybody's trouble his only offense was he was born from a family that decided to fight the prophetic word the bible says when he set up the gate his younger son exactly what happened to the elder brother now started happening to the younger brother what is wrong with you again i'm sure the mother will say let's rush to the hospital now according to the word of the lord which he spake by joshua the son of Nun. hallelujah don't you dare think it does not matter that our forefathers buried people alive and while those people were being buried they said we we, we are dying but the ones who will be alive will be worse than death and they said we don't care when they were shouting at jesus crucify him they didn't know what they were saying and for many people we say it does not matter if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 9 there are many people who have subjected themselves in ignorance or by reason of the things that happen in time past. It says, when thou art come to the land which the Lord giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Uh -huh. Next verse. It says, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times an enchanter a witch to 12 11 please or a charmer a consultant with familiar spirit or a wizard a necromancer verse 12 for all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god will drive them out from before thee hallelujah I think I shared a story here in Koinonia and let me say it quickly before we begin to pray about someone who a young lady a, a young woman who wanted a child desperately and she went to somebody and the person said well I know what to do and you will have a child but that when this child is 20 20 on the dot make sure you return this child back for some kind of sacrifice that will be done and the woman looked at the old man and said 20 years from now you probably will be dead she pointed at a tiny boy who was playing there and said this boy will be alive he's the one who will be here this is a case that i handled it's not a story they told me when this lady was 20 on the dot may god help you to come and stand near her and say you like her you see what will happen to you you came innocently and it's not like any you are bad you are not bad church born again person just came and things started going haywire and then people started advising the mother say quietly go to that man and resolve whatever it is or his son so someone recommended her that she would come to me when she came and i looked at a lady wonderful lady wonderful woman the realm of the spirit doesn't care did you hear what i said wonderful lady wonderful man the realm of the spirit does not care foundations are powerful foundations are powerful regions have foundational problems you know the power of foundations by the patterns that follow the patterns as it happened to son it happened to father it happened to elder brother 
families where women feed the men no matter how hard working the men are something must happen hallelujah but this is why god has ordained a meeting like this because in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god everything that needs to be corrected for your glory to rise everything that needs to be put in place this night in the presence of the angels and the presence of the mighty one who is the king of glory it must be corrected this night <laughs> hallelujah i came from a background and a family and a region where i didn't see some things happen to people i had to sit down and study it sincerely and and to be honest myself that if I have to rise to a position where I'll be able to serve and honor the name of the Lord at a global scale, there are things that need to be corrected and done. I've told you my story. As a man of God, demons used to oppress me. Most people will not tell you the truth. They didn't care that I was anointed. It didn't stop the sick from being healed though. Yet I will go to bed and here comes this wicked spirit. And because of the prophetic inclination, I would see them. I thought it was so with everyone. How can I go and preach and a spirit is running out in a meeting and yet coming to me in a room and I'm driving it and it's not going. Have respect for the covenant. I know one, a very proud gentleman years ago, he walked into my room. I used to counsel in a small room that time and he walked to me and I saw a spirit standing behind him. And he was sharing with me some of his challenges. And I said, can I pray for you? It looks like there's something. He said, no, 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 I don't believe that. I said, okay, no problem, I'm sorry. Let me just pray. As I said in Jesus' name, the last thing that gentleman will remember was maybe like 30 or so minutes later on when he even recovered. For the next three days, he kept texting me what happened. He said, this is everything I believe. I don't know where to start from. Let me tell you the truth foundations are real foundations are very very real hallelujah foundations are real you find patterns you find all kinds of demonic things that seem to veto the efforts of men regardless what they do there are sincere men of god who have graces that should be speaking across the globes but these foundations, because of an incorrect foundation that has not been dealt with, with understanding. The devil does not need to cause medical problem, a problem of delays and pain and all of that. He doesn't need to do that. All he needs to do is to ensure that that faulty foundation remains. The, the faulty foundation will manufacture itself many kinds of wrong problems. Do you cut a tree by removing the leaves one by one? Think how burdensome that labor is. Foundation. By the time you uproot it, even if the leaves are still green, just leave them as a matter of time. They will dry up because it has lost contact. The same way that tree fell, this is how I declare over someone, whatever has connected you, in the name of Jesus, it gives way this night. Listen carefully. This is someone's deliverance already. 